All right, A-side matchup here. Kevin Farmer versus Alan Wong. Race to five. We have our tournament bracket up there. If you can, like and share the stream to everybody. That would help us out immensely. I think we're going to get started here real quick. Started off with 72 players in the tournament today. Nice turnout. Check our different camera angles here before we started playing. Uh, Steven, no, they're not always going to be in Philly. Uh, Bluegrass is one of our sponsors, so we do run a lot of tournaments out of here. Um, we are starting to move up and down the East Coast here a little bit. Uh, I believe in August we're going to be in at Eagle Billiards, Dixon City. I think it's Dixon City where it's at. Uh, I'll be streaming the Diamond... Uh, bar box tournament in September down in Delco. And then I believe we're going to be going up towards Massachusetts in September, right before we start the uh, Pennsylvania State Championships. My two co-hosts here, uh, Teresa and Steve, are taking a walk or outside real quick. They'll be back in in a minute. Yeah. Mine's hot. All right. 
We got our scrolling graphic on the bottom there with the payouts for the tournament today. So that's the place, not the cow cut. So you have the tournament, then you have the auction. Auction and cow cut are the same thing. For legality purposes, we call it an auction around here. <laughs> So we have Kevin Farmer and Alan Wong. Yeah, Kev, uh, Alan's at the table now in all black. Kevin's got the gray and black uh, American flag shirt on. Now these are both still winner's brackets, right? It's a still A-side matchup, correct? On a shot like this, he's going to have to roll forward with it. I think if he hits it low, he's not going to get the position that he's, he wants to get on this particular shot. Uh, South Carolina is not, uh, not out of the question for us there, Stephen. Sorry, I just saw your, your comment. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm always looking to... Uh, I'm I'm always looking to to move around, you know, whatever's out there. What rooms are down there in South Carolina? All right, Alan's trying to figure out how to play this to get back on the seven. Just a stop shot. He actually doesn't want to be straight in with the seven. If he stops it directly where he's at, he can play the seven and roll and play this eight in the same pocket. He rolled up a little too far there. He has to play this in the side, right? So it's going to drift. I mean, it down depends. It leaves him a longer shot. Sort of dealer's choice. If you can play it in the side, we'll get back in line for the eight. He could also just play it into the corner, just play the tougher shot. Same thing, he'll get a line for the eight. We just got hit with a slew of matches being finished here all at once. Can you tell how many folks are still in it? And it's all right, yeah. Yeah, I'm just setting up our, uh, setting up the next matches now. For you guys at home, if you want to follow along, you can hit the bracket link. And it's it's pretty live. Alan just scratched. This is going to put Kevin uh, in, in a very, very good position. Just follow the eight and then straight in with the middle. All right, Kevin in the side here. I'll take a one nothing lead with this shot if he makes it. All right, one nothing Kevin going into rack number two. I need that. I don't want that here. It's kept safe somewhere in the in the black box or whatever. So earlier last week, we closed one of our a deal with one of our new sponsors here, Trophy Smack. Uh, TrophySmack.com is where you would go to. We actually have a link for it here from PA Pro Am that gives you a nice little discount. I think it's like 10% off. Uh, they got awesome stuff. They got belts, rings, two three-tier trophies. They have pretty much anything that you want for trophies. And they can do anything. They can do it for fantasy football. Uh, fantasy hockey, cornhole, baseball, hockey, pool. I mean, we're the first ones with them in pool. Now, there's been other people who have bought trophies from them, but we are the first sponsored group from pool with Trophy Smack. Too, right? 
customization. Everything's custom. You can do custom pictures. You could do pretty much if you think if you can think of it, Trophy Smack can do it for you. Alan on the break. Track number two, Alan the break here. This is a rotating break. Alternate break, yes, sir. Break and you rack your own. Yes, definitely rack your own. Template rack, two ball in the back to eliminate the soft breaking. These guys have a lot more composure than I do. I can't just leave the rack on the table. I have to take it off the table. My <laughs> some pe allow some it. people have to grab it right away. Yes. Some people uh, are. I'm going to try to grab it even when I'm not supposed to. <laughs> some people are okay with just leaving it there. You have to be careful in some of the, the tournaments there that play what they call all ball fouls. So if you touch any ball, it's a foul. And if you try to move that rack and it moves a ball, you're giving up ball in hand, even if you didn't touch a cue ball. What's his thought here? He can't, wants to make him make the one. So thought process, my thought process here is to play this one, bank it behind the 6-2 and leave the cue ball. No, no, Kevin's thought process and playing it safe off the rail. What is what is he hoping to get out of this? He's trying to hope he's going to kick out the two, or he's just kind of hoping that his opponent, I if he got, plays it, it's ball in hand. Is he even it's, know? What's that? It's ball in hand. Is he even know? No, it's not ball in hand. It's uh, push out. Or, I'm sorry. Yeah, push out after the break. Explain that. Okay, so for those listening, Steve's uh, Steve's new to tournament atmosphere, so we're getting him uh, getting him seasoned here. In nine ball, whoever breaks the rack after the rack is broken, either if a ball is made or the incoming player comes to the table, regardless, either player has a chance to do what's called a push out, where you can push the cue ball to anywhere on the table. You don't have to make a legal hit. You could pocket a ball. You could just push it to a corner. You can touch a ball and push it into the middle of the table. So you as the incoming player, you play a push shot. I have the option to either take the shot or make you shoot from there. It's to eliminate that soft breaking style where players will soft break a, a rack and yeah, when, when they soft break the rack, the balls get all clustered up and then you have no shot. How many tables do we have going live at once? Uh, you mean live on uh, camera? Just for the tournament. How oh, many tables do you have? I'm using 25 tables today. We have 50 at our disposal here at Bluegrass Billiards. Alan's trying to figure out how to break open this uh, two ball here. What is your thought? Come behind it? What's this? Try to follow into it? And I would follow into it. Let's play that one in the corner. It's about a two o'clock English. We have to make sure you have your angle proper. So he doesn't want to be dead straight, but he doesn't want to be a hard angle. So I'd say just pretty much right where he's at from here. And then just when you play it in, you know, high left English, two o'clock. I'm sorry, high right English, high right English. You're trying to kick the six out. Yeah, you're just trying to hit one of the balls and open the cluster. Just like that. He can see enough of it. Oh, he can definitely make it. So from here, you're just looking at your, yeah, your table layout. So two gets you to the three. Three will get you to the four. Four gets you right back to the five, which if you play the five in the side pocket, which would be the top side pocket. So right now he would play the two in the top left corner with just a little bit of a stun stun shot. Maybe stun it about eight inches to the right of the two in a straight line. When he plays the three, just a little high, you want to come down one rail. You want to be an angle on that four there, right? You, you definitely need an angle on the four because you want an angle on the five coming up to the six. Just overstroke that just a little. Even if he made it, he has, he can cut, but he has no shot from it there. 
can't see them very even if it just has is. Yeah, it's going to be. It would be tough. And he can hit the three, but I, I don't think he would be able to make the contact to make the shot. Kevin is pretty much the same situation. It's not. Kevin basically put the cue ball right back where I was saying to leave it for the shot. So this has to be a feather shot. You don't want to. You don't want to hit it hard to where you hit the bottom rail coming to the center of the table. You want to be maybe five inches off that rail. He should get there. Eh, a little harder than he wanted to. Yeah. So now the situation is, does he go up and down the table? Or does he just go past the five and then play a longer shot? This is where speed control is so important. Exactly. It's more about comfortability. So he just he opted for the safe, try to hide it behind the five. Successful. What's that? It looks successful. Yeah, let's uh we'll check the overhead here. Oh, that's the wrong angle. <laughs> there we go. So he might from this particular angle looks like he could hit it. I'm not sure if he can make it though. Up as if he can see it. Yeah, he can hit it. It's about just, well. How about that? Played him. Testing out a new camera here. Doesn't, not necessarily fond of this camera. I think we're going to switch out for the next tournament. I have a few sponsors that send us a couple cameras to try out and uh, give some feedback. A little bit of low right here should catch the rail, bring them back out. Great shot. He can pass that eight is huge right there. Yeah. Slight deviation from what he wanted to do. If he hits that eight, he's much harder on the six. Still make it, but. Now for this, you're looking to, to drift below, take the seven in the corner. Yes, yes, we're looking to come past it. That's the wrong one. This one. Sorry. Oh, that there was loud. <laughs> I'm back. Oh, we have new people in the chat. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to leave you and Steve to talk for a minute. I have to go. Where are you going? I have to go answer a rules question. I'll be back. Okay. I'll be right here. Well, we'd like another rules question. No. <laughs> Apparently we don't. <laughs> Head shake, no. We're going to let that one go. Uh, Steven Polani. I guess is how you say the last name. Are your tournaments always in Philly? Um, uh, no, well, around here, yeah, Bluegrass, Markley's is where they've been so far, but they might venture out. He, Frank, is, uh, has many, many plans to expand to different areas of the state. With different area codes, what's that song? <laughs> different hoes, different area codes, don't know, Mindy, no. Mindy would, they would never. They're the cutest couple ever. <laughs> All right, so she's into the hardcore hip hop though, so she would know. Really? Maybe. Do you think I'm she's guessing. hardcore hip? Yeah. All I'm right. Guessing. In All New right. Hampshire, in the mean streets of New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> like saying the mean they, streets of upstate New York. That's what they. That's what they listen. <laughs> hmm. So Alan Wong. Um, opts to play that ball in the side pocket. He's okay. Again, gun to your head. 
Angle. Gun to your head. It's the angle. Who cares? Yeah. You make the ball? Are you not 50 yard line on the ball? All right, there you're good. You right? missed it while you were gone. Frank got to teach everybody what a push shot is. No, he didn't. He did. I'm a far superior instructor. Explain it. Do you do a good job? I still don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I sound like a jerk right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that ball, ball, that was a bank shot <laughs> by Alan. All right, so it's 101. Wait, oh, page. Okay, 1 1. 1 1. Right? Yes? Yes. 1 1. Oh, in the box. Sponsor. Um, A push shot. Push shots are far easier when there's a dis between the skill levels like you choose a push-up I'm never choosing a push-up if I can see the ball okay if I'm on the one ball and I can see it in some way shape or form I'm gonna try to play safe I'm not gonna use a push-up because at that very moment I have an opportunity where I can manipulate the one the way that I want to I could put a ball on a rail I can move it behind a ball I can take away an out table like I have so many options when I can see the ball but a push is used when you don't want to take the shot and you want to force the, your opponent into a choice. Um, I look at a push shot is sometimes I'm daring somebody to do something because if I put the cue ball wherever I want on the table, I'm trying to put you into like a makeable shot with a possible scratch or a makeable shot, but there's no way in hell that you're going to be able to get on the next ball. I, I look at it as I'm double daring you because you could say back to me, Teresa, I triple dog dare you go ahead. They can give the ball back to me. They don't have to take the push shot. That's why I say when I can see the ball, when I can see the first object ball, I'm usually not opting for a push. If I can't make it, I'm trying. There's always something you could do with a safe, it, even if it's just making it difficult. We're not putting them in a position where they can save you back. That's also important. And when you think about the push shot, you can't put somebody like, oh, you can't make. It's not just about oh, they can't make the ball. Because if they can see the ball, because they're in order for them to even say, yes, I accept it, I'm going to take the shot, they have to see the ball. Right. So you're giving the person the option to see the ball, but then do something with it. And if they can't make it, there's always that option for safe. Sure. So when you think about a push, you need to push them into either they can make a ball but not get out yeah. eventually, whether that's later in the rack or whether it's right then and there. Like eventually, I don't think you're going to be able to get out. Um, or you need to push them into where you think you see a safe shot where you don't think they see a safe shot. Right. It's a, the idea is it's a forced decision. Yes, it is and very much trying, so. You're trying to put them in, in the position to give you a better advantage after we shoot. I'm putting them in a position where I wouldn't want to shoot that ball, but I know I have to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the, it's just the best way to do it. I think, I don't know. So does that, that great? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Alan has a great layout. The thing, though, with push shots is I don't think you can just come to a tournament and just start paying epic push shots. Like, there's definitely a learning curve there. You have sure. to do it a few times and see what other people's choices and reactions are to, like, really develop something that works for you, which is why coming out to these tournaments is huge. Mm -hmm. um, because if you want to play bigger tournaments eventually against better people, this is a very common rule in a tournament. Yes. And I think... At Again, this is the, my first tournament, so not, not knowing what that is or, or how that really works. When Kevin did it in the first rack, my thinking would have been I'm picking the ball up, it's ball in hand. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And not knowing that rule, like it's, it's yeah. not something that you see in regular league play. It's not something that you're accustomed to. Again, it's, it's, another, it's another item in your toolbox. And being new, we, we sort of talked about this already, but being new you don't want to ask questions because right. you don't want to look weak you could be the best player in the room and not know what a push shot is but you just don't want to appear weak so you just kind of take it and how many racks are lost in the meantime until you figure it out yes really and it's the best thing to do is to just ask and again in this in this kind of tournament with the environment that we're in these are less experienced shooters these are shooters that are um you know better than average but you know these guys aren't pros these aren't no they're still learning tournaments. and things like that when they come up again these are the best tournaments to kind of join if you're mm -hmm. new and you're interested in in, in in getting involved yeah yeah i believe that a lot to do with these tournaments and i promise i'll get back to the game but 
I think a lot of these tournaments are people that are on the cusp. Like it's, it could make or break you uh, sometimes because you're like, well, I want to do better. And then for the people that are super competitive and truly want to do better, this opens up a different dimension to the game. Yeah. When you, when you have to be a body in a chair and sit there and watch somebody run out, mm-hmm. um, it changes you as a player. It makes it so like, Hey, I, but I want to do that. Like, I don't want to give any more chances. I don't want to miss any more balls and you'll take that in a light of fire. Yeah. But some people don't have that competitive spirit. So go to this and then say, it's not for me and then move on. Right. And that's okay. Whatever you decide, some people just want to play in leagues and that's fine. Like you do what you're comfortable with. Some people will just, you know, go to tri cups and whirlpool qualifiers and play in leagues the rest of their life. And you know what? I wish I could do just that. It'd be a lot less expensive. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but for me, I like, um, it's a different avenue. It's an it opportunity is. too. When, when you shoot in those, in the tri cups and you shoot in the world qualifiers, you're seeing the same faces you normally shoot. Mm-hmm. So there's a familiarity that you that you have, and and that could be good or bad. But yeah, coming here, you know, you're seeing a bunch of faces you don't know. You're seeing, you know, a bunch of different styles of shooting. And mm-hmm. One of the things that I, I was actually waiting because uh, waiting for you to come back to ask me this question. Mm-hmm. So for me, I've been here. I was here for four hours before mm-hmm. I shot my first match. Okay. Now dropping down into the losers bracket, mm-hmm. and the B bracket, um, I'm gonna have some time in between the matches. Okay. And in tournament scenarios like this, managing your time and what you're doing before your matches and, yep. and after your matches, stay in, in the moment, stay in the right mindset. Mm-hmm. Like, what are some suggestions that you have? Are you looking to go get something to eat? Are you going to, um... you know, find a quiet spot to chill out while you're waiting for your opportunities yeah let me preface this by saying it's probably different for everybody because i know some people alan that just oh alan just won i'm so sorry that's folks okay. i got on a little horse now so it's two to one um alan versus kevin like i i can eat in the middle playing and be fine but i know people that eat in the middle and then they'll play like crap um i did it once and it worked and it it doesn't bother me it's not something that i think about sure. But I think a lot of these things, we kind of think that we should think weird about it um, or things that we have to do. Look, for me, my most important things are staying mentally like in the game. I can't check out from pool. I I need to usually sit. I, and it's not necessarily watch a stream table, yeah. but I'll pick who I think the best players are in the room and I'll watch them. And it's not necessarily just for scouting. You're doing it just to stay in the just moment. Just to stay in the moment. Like to know that good pool can be played. Yeah. Because sometimes when I watch lesser players play, or just not even lesser players, just people that are having like two, like a bad set. Yes. It takes me out of the art of the possible. And like mentally for me, I have to be consistent in thinking about thinking what I can do at a table as opposed to, oh God, they got bad here and oh, they missed that ball and you shouldn't miss that ball. And, and the- I need to see the more positive side of it. And if I can't find that, I'll go to a table and I'm a big fan of, I'll, I have the hiccups all of a sudden. I'll just rifle balls. Like I'll put a ball in the middle of the table and I'll just take a shot that I know I'll make a hundred times and I'll just shoot a hundred times because it keeps me confident. It's like, and I don't, I don't care. I'll, I'll put the ball in front of the pocket and just make it a hundred times, but I did it a hundred times, you know? So I try to not watch awful pool, <laughs> whether it's a bad set or just I not. I think too, just when you're watching awful pool, like the teacher in you wants to jump up and go, I, I want to help. I want to yeah. tell you what you're doing wrong. But at the same time, like you don't want to be that person that's like, you know, I don't know you. I don't, I don't know yeah. you from tomorrow. You could just be having a bad game, but you definitely shouldn't have taken that shot. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, when you do take that shot, you want to hit it with this English or, you know. Yeah. It's really tough too because... Oh, how do I say this? Pool's very much still a man sport. So, and it's just the mentality and the stigma around it, which is fine. I'm just aware of it. I can't change it overnight. Sometimes it takes a while for somebody to like know me and see me play and see how I talk about the sport uh, before they're able to accept constructive criticism from me. Yeah, there's a respect there. And again, when we go back to the to machismo we were talking about in the, last, yeah. in the last stream where... You know, there are a lot of guys out there that are like, you're a girl. What do you know? Hey. And, and, and <laughs> that's a foolish way of thinking it because... Alyssa, Salt's in the chat. <laughs> we'll play not, anybody in doubles. <laughs> yeah, this is not a... Uh, I mean, you don't have to be a man to be good at pool. It doesn't matter no. what your gender is. You know, I've seen girls... Well, I've been beat by girls. And, you know, 
it's it's no different than losing to a guy. I mean, yeah. Well, you're not the majority. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure. And yeah, yeah. No, they get real mad. I'm sure. I probably I I don't know. Maybe just because it's my personal experience, but I feel like I'm sharp more than anybody else. I also feel like when people play me, they play their best pool they've ever played in their life. <laughs> I don't. You know, they don't want to lose. Yeah, I it. guess not. Right. I guess not. All right. So, um, Alan and Kevin, they're on the winner side. They are. We're still on the ace. All right. So we're still a uh, racist to five. Okay. Cool. I can see why that was just. It was not a good fight. And you know what? The funny thing I recommend if anybody ever gets a chance, or like if you're sitting at home and watching pool, turn the volume down and commentate yourself. You are going to learn a lot about yourself <laughs> just based on how you see the game. It's uh, it's funny. These little ball rolls, right? Like. He, he could have very easily taken the cue and hit the nine, been down table for that two ball. But because he hit like a centimeter to the left of where he wanted to, now he's behind a ball. Yes. It really shows how important it is to learn how to play good position. Um, I think it's the most important thing in the world. And unfortunately, when you learn, start learning how to play good position, you drop back in your game a little bit and start missing balls. So what people do is they say, screw position, I'm just going to make balls. Um, you know, you don't those see are, that moment. Those are what we refer to as barroom shoes. Yeah, or I call them as uh, ball makers. Yeah, shot makers. Yeah, shot makers. Yeah. Um, There's a big difference. I mean, if you're at home and you're you're a bar shooter, I mean, that doesn't mean that you can't you can't hang with yeah. you know, tournament shooters or league shooters, but you definitely shoot a different style. It's a lot yeah. more reckless. It's a lot more Very poke reckless. And hope. I hate reckless. Yes, it's a lot more poke and hope. Yeah. And, and sure, you're gonna you're gonna make balls, but. Uh, in long term, there's a lot of strategy. There's a lot of technique that goes into it, to to being able to make ball play to ball. position. And, yeah. and and a lot of those guys, you can tell too, they have no no vision when no. it comes to the to the table. Like they're not they're no. one shot and that's it. They're not thinking two three shots ahead or where do I. But want they to know be. they can make a ball from anywhere on the table yeah. Yeah. on their you know hole in the wall room where the the table leans to the right and they can make this triple bank shot that's every time they shoot it. <laughs> That was a good save. It's smart, smart shots, and I feel like this is this. This is a skill level one, too. One. It's two one. He says it's one one. Kevin said. Is that one one? Yes. I don't want to change it. What is it? Look, it says two one on the score too. That's the score that they I just put in. To double check as you and I were kind of talking through the stream, and oh yeah, I want to make sure we didn't it's miss two anything. It's two one, right? I think it is. Okay, great. Am I the only one not wearing wet red today? I'm sorry. This was unintentional. You know what would be great? If we had like shots. He, oh yeah. <laughs> no hesitation. No hesitation. Um yeah, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a day. All right, Steve, quick, what's the problem here? What's the problem? What's he gotta worry about? I mean, the seven is the obvious. Why is it the biggest problem? Because of its location. Yes. <laughs> because even if he gets behind this ball, right? I hate even to if... be Captain Obvious. But... <laughs> well, I'm so asking because... It... The only way that he can... I mean, he, he has to be on the rail because of the location. Trying to sneak it past the pocket to go down. Mm. Uh, and you don't want to be the cue ball going up. No. Unfortunately, I think for this ball that... That's exactly um, where I said he wanted to be. Right up against the rail. Yeah. I don't. I think I for I would have preferred to cross the pocket actually based on where the uh, ball is a seven ball, because crossing the pocket. So means, you wanted to be on the other side. Yeah. Of the yeah. Just based Coming on where it was. Eight, right? Yeah. I don't know. He still hit it pretty good to me. Listen, he I did hit good. I, think I, I, been right. I was just saying. I think I might have been right. <laughs> Not about being right, Steve. Okay. So there's so many different ways you can hit that, and so many different ways you can get okay. a catch or you can. So shots, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who's going? <laughs> that was a great shot on the eight to get back on the nine. He's That's got a, a little shot. bit of an angle, so he's not straight. Oh. Um. Kind of hammered that one. Yeah. Way, way too hard. I've been pinning on that. Um. um a lot of ums right now because we're trying to figure out well somebody walked by when he was down on that shot and i think that 
could have had something to do with that. I mean, it's it's fine to say, you know, we should be better than that. It doesn't matter if somebody, you know, walks in front of your shot or talks or whatever. But the truth of the matter is, is that we all get annoyed because it does make it more difficult. Sure. Significantly it changes more. Your, changes your line of sight. Absolutely. It, it makes you adjust. Yeah, and he didn't do that. No. I'm thinking maybe he should just stood up. So it looks like Alan's going to take a three to one lead here. Oh, Frank, my yeah, lady. We're back. I joined us. Just enough time to pay some bills. <laughs> so, one of our sponsors here, Kamui Tips. I personally shoot with a Kamui Tip on my cue. Do you? I do. Mm. Super soft. You have a carbon fiber shaft. I do. Yeah. I would say 90% of carbon fiber shafts have a Kamui Super Soft on it. Because it, you guys, it makes you think that you're gods. I with play pretty goddamn put. well don't, with any kill I play with, but <laughs> and then also we'd like to uh, one of our newest sponsors here, is Christina Dekach, her uh, new pool workbook. That's pretty cool. It's got a workbook. Oh, look at that! You can actually draw the the table out. So Frank actually has to go grab something. He'll be right back with us. Yeah, we're good. So, okay, look where he's breaking from. I talked about this. Okay. Um, we're going to say that three ball goes in the corner if it doesn't murder it. How about that? How about that? That's what happens. He's breaking. So why is that? Why is that? Oh, this is like the fourth match I've commented on it. <laughs> and I keep talking so about we have, it. We have new people popping up all yes. the time. Yes. All right. So I'll say it again. So the magic rack makes a perfect rack, meaning all nine balls are touching each other. There's no gaps. Now, when there's no gaps because of the magic rack, you can break that ball, you can break that rack from, see the second diamond from the bottom left of our screen? The cue ball, just at first, picture in your mind, placing it on the second diamond, and then moving it maybe an inch or two um, towards the center of the table. And you hit that cue ball, center ball, with power, square face into the one ball, the wing ball will go in every time because there's no gaps. Okay, so that's why pro, pro players, um, a lot of pro tournaments, they're doing a lot to change that because it's like, oh, we finally achieved this perfect rack, but now we're not going to let you break in the wing ball every time. It's like, right. then what was the point of making the perfect rack? You know what I mean? So they have these rules of you have to break in the kitchen, which if I could draw it on the screen, I would, but it's like... That feature's coming soon. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. If you can imagine the, the two dots you can see on the short rail on the left-hand side of the screen, if you drew a line from there to the head string line, it makes a little box. Uh, if you look it up on, for those of you at home, if you go to Google and you look up uh, the kitchen uh, billiards, it'll show you a picture of it. But they make a requirement, so you have to break out of the kitchen because when you break from the kitchen, it doesn't make the wing ball. So that's just something that they do. But if you're going to make a perfect rack, they but they don't want people breaking a run in 10 in a row, just make an alternating break. Who cares? Let them sink the wing ball. Sure. It's not guaranteed that the person is going to play perfect and get out. I mean, when you get to the pro level, it kind of it means matters. that yeah it matters yeah but not here so that's why i really like how frank does it it's rack your own magic rack nine doesn't count in the snap alternating breaks good if you can make the wing ball if you know that about the rack then do it yeah you know there's no uh like unincentivizing it here steve i think you're going to be leaving us buddy you have a match here Ooh, oh steve's got a match table 18 that's fun I was the first one to get back. Yes, you, you were. Yeah, he opted to try to play safe on that ball. He wanted to get under the ball. Um, it was just too much of an angle. And Hopefully when I'm back, it's after a win. Okay, good luck, Steve. Are you leaving? Are we doing shots? He says, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, he's got to do two rails. He's thin in the ball. One, two, boop, boop. Good Make job. Sure. Great job. Now, I don't know. Probably playing this center ball. Playing I, the ball yeah, the I just play a little roll. Yeah. Up. He stood up on the end of his shot. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I resent your comment earlier. I think of God. What? So when did your, I say that? About two minutes ago, we were talking about Kamui tips. I didn't say you. I uh -huh. was referring to all carbon were, fiber, super and, soft Kamui tip enthusiasts. 
<laughs> as general. <laughs> Do you know how many people are like, Do you have any Kamui Super Tops? <laughs> Can you have your husband put it on my queue? I'm like, What is it, carbon fiber? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Kamui great- works for me. They're great. They do a lot for us here at PA Pro. They're fantastic. So. I wish I had more of their tips. Shameless plug. Huh. <laughs> I always have to scrounge around the island for them. Nobody has like a steady influx of Kamui tips. Like, Only knew somebody who knew people at Kamui. Oh my, oh. God. Oh my God. That would be that? amazing. Wow, Frank. <laughs> Kamui Tosparilla just saying. I still haven't told Steve about the pool cues yet. I'm so upset that he thought I was a five. Yeah. I thought I talked more intelligibly than that about pool. The fives aren't intelligent. <laughs> but I was like given like sound mental like toughness advice. Oh, listen, <laughs> not every coach. Uh, I know coaches that that. I was trying. So you he, that I, means I know coaches I came across- that coach like superstar players, like basketball players yeah. and things like that. But the, I mean, you want to ask them to run a forty, a four, four forty? It's not going to happen. So I give the appearance of I can teach and not do. No, but what I'm saying is that it. There is no appearance in pool. That's the biggest thing everybody always has in their mind. I have gotten my ass kicked by a little yes. old lady. I've gotten my ass kicked by a 12-year-old kid. Um, and then I've also been the one on the other end of it, you know, mm-hmm. throwing out the beatings. So, throwing out the beatings. <laughs> pool is the most non-discriminative <laughs> sport in the world. Do you, know- you have no idea what a player is going to be no. until they shoot the ball. No. When I was in my early 20s, okay, that's how long I've known Brianna Miller for, one of your sponsor players, yeah. early 20s. Um, so, you know, you go to pool, drink, whatever. Uh, she was one of the first people I played, and she was like 14, and she whooped me. And didn't miss a ball, Robert. Didn't right? miss a ball. She yeah. became my favorite person. I've seen that girl sit at the expo, <laughs> win the juniors, then go win the women's event. Like, in, at the age of like 16, absolutely insane. Now she's like a woman, and it's weird. <laughs> she's the first kid to ever whoop my butt. <laughs> we actually have her going out to, uh, I believe, the Michigan Open. Michigan is it Michigan? Yeah, yeah. She just did West Wisconsin, right? Yeah, she yeah. did real well. She did real well. Did real well there. She looked really confident on the stream. It was good to see. I don't know if she's a fan of the um, of the shootout. Though. Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody's a fan of the shootout. <laughs> well, number one, I'm not a fan of a race to four to begin with. Oh, man. All right, so let's see where he breaks from. We're going to try to see if we know if he's going to put the five. Yes, he will put the five in the corner because he's breaking from the second diamond, the magic crack, outside the kitchen. I rattled him. Just remember, you don't actually have to hit that shot hard. You don't have to kill it. It's it's kind of an equalizer. If you knew how to break it with the magic crack, then it could definitely equalize the game. All right, who we got in Facebook land here? So I don't, I think I've watched Kevin Farmer shoot before. I'm going to look him up and see where he's from. Um, what's great is there's a lot of uh, newer players. Yeah, he's from Pennsylvania. Uh, 498 with 877 robustness. So yeah, I've definitely seen him play before. Um, so he's got some tournament experience. Uh, we keep talking about that in the stream. Like, if you want to progress in pool, you know, whether you're new or you've been stuck at a five and like just want to break through to a six, seven, you play in these tournaments and you learn the other side of it. Because sometimes in our leagues, we get stuck, like Steve was talking about, just getting stuck playing the same people and you never really get to see any other style of play. Well, sometimes when you come out to these tournaments, you play somebody. And they have just a style that you can relate to and you can adapt into your style of play. And then it opens up a different dimension to the game. So coming out here and playing these is, is super important for development. And then to just, and if you want to just come out and support, that's great too. Uh, you see, you know, a lot of people here are nervous. The people that I've seen all the time and in leagues and, you know, tri cups and world pool qualifier, and they're here for the first time. And they're telling me that they're nervous. It's totally normal, but to get over that, you have to go and you have to play more in them. Uh, that's all. That's the name of the game, and that's what we're doing now. So I'd like to see at the end of this if um, somebody that's not so experienced in tournaments can come out and win it because that means they were able to like work through that really quick and just decide, hey, I like playing tournaments. I can do this for myself. I can do the best, the best I can. All right, we got Alan Wong. I'm looking him up. 
Kevin Farmer's right at the cusp. Alan Wong. Yeah, yeah. I think Kevin runs 497. Kevin actually does, uh, he plays out of Markley Billiards. Oh, Mar- that's how I know him. Okay. He does uh, He does Salado Sundays over there. They have uh, that's how I know a lot of Salado matches. Yes. I have my Salado jersey on. <laughs> that's why I know him. That's great. <laughs> I've been in my own little bubble of Northern Virginia for the past six months. I'll have to excuse me. All right, so he's playing this in the top left hand corner. He's gonna hope for some love to play that sick ball on the side. That was gutsy. Now, uh, this would drive me nuts. We need to pick up the rack. For those of you that haven't played in these uh, tournaments, pick up the rack as soon as you can, because otherwise, it's it's just something you don't have to think about later. You know, like it's in my way. Like, he looked at the shot, then he picked up the rack. Now he's going to get down on the shot again. It just can break a little bit of a rhythm. So do you agree with that, Frank? Like, the first opportunity you can pick up the magic rack? Um, so it it doesn't bother me. Okay. But I usually just pick it up as a, out of habit. Just first? Yeah. What put you in that habit, though? Of picking it up? Yeah. Uh, Somebody else crying about it. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I know it's... You know, they say it doesn't affect your shot. I know that if you roll it, if you roll it thin or roll it slow, it will affect it will. your shot. It will absolutely. So it's an object on the table I, that isn't I know perfectly the, flat. If I shoot over it, I just fire over it. Yeah. I usually just leave it there. That doesn't really bother me. Really? Yeah. Oh, what I do? This? Yeah, please. Thank you. Well. But that also would imply that I'm usually shooting a nine, and lately I've been just watching everybody else shoot it. So <laughs> it happens that way. Yeah, right? it's been about a two week slump. Um, it's okay. You'll get it I'll back, buddy. It. You'll get you'll get it back. I hate it when it's like worst thing that can happen ever, and it happens over and over and over again. You're in, like, is this? Am I putting this like into the world? In, pra- in practice, I'm spotting <laughs> SVB the seven. I can't miss a ball, but when I you know, try to get on a table, I miss everything. That's the worst, especially when you when you're not missing a ball and you yeah. pump yourself up oh. for a tournament. You're in the cow cutting. You're like, yeah, I got myself for a hundred. Let's go, and then you can't hit the broadside of a barn. Oh, uh, it happened to me <laughs> a couple weeks ago. I just actually it happened to, to Mindy and I. We went down to to Maryland to play in a doubles tournament and the night before we, we broke and ran like two or three in a row couldn't miss a shot <laughs> right we were like yeah we're gonna go steal this money yeah you know? we got this let's go <laughs> we're the best two it out <laughs> we didn't talk to each other for the first 30 minutes on oh right over we pissed off each other <laughs> cause like I'm sure you're thinking of like what you're gonna say about her and she's thinking about what she's gonna say about you what, what in my mind <laughs> is, is remember this is your wife <laughs> That's good. Oh, Joe Bassetti says he's the weirdo who refuses to pick it up. Joe, I can't stand that. <laughs> and you know what? I said this earlier. Like when the nine ball stays on it, right? Yeah. I want to pick. I just want to go down there with the person I'm playing against. You pick up the ball. I'll pull the rack out. You put the ball down. So it's funny that you say that. I got. I actually just got these off at Dominic Dunn from Dunsky uh, Dungeon. Okay. It's the uh, little plastic things you put underneath They're the great. ball. Yes. So. With the state championships yeah. coming up, we yeah. got uh, we got like six of them. That's so great. We need to. I have and roughing then, skills. If you want to use me for two different things? Well, I can also rough. I would assume you were going to be playing in the women's one. Oh, the women's is going to be here for it. Yeah, I'm going to play in that. Yeah, I'm going to be busy. I can't do it that day. Yeah. Um, I like to pick it if the ball is on it. I'm picking it up right away because if I wait until later in the rack. Like, moving it seems more of a big deal. Okay. But if you pick it up at the beginning and it moves, like, you know, a centimeter, who freaking cares, right? Yeah. But if you wait until the end, then when it's high intensity, yeah, exactly. you know, no, oh, I'm moving it ball. right now. Yeah. No, can we just pick it up and get rid of it now? I'm Absolutely. done. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, Joe Bassetti, I'm never playing you again with a magic rack. This <laughs> is going to annoy me. I'm going to think about this. Who's Kobe forever? Uh, it's, uh, oh, Jay Beanie, a friend of mine. Jay Beanie? Jay Vini. Vini? Yeah. Jay Vini. He's uh, one of my like referees for API. Is he? Yeah. Hi, Jay. He offered you some positive reinforcement and said, great matches. Oh, thanks, pal. Appreciate it. Nice guy, right? Hey, Jay's a uh, six seven, Good player. Yeah? Yep. I'll play him. Be a good match. <laughs> I'm trying to be tough, Frank. <laughs> I'm trying to be tough here. This one hell of a show. <laughs> Indy's consoling me. Oh, shit. I shot there by Alan. Oh, is he going to scratch? 
Oh. Oh, did you hit the button slow already? Speed. Slow <gasps> speed. I didn't hit the button. That's why you never hit the button. Wow. I cannot believe it made it to that corner to scratch. That was a hell of a cut shot. Am I allowed to say hell? Yeah, sure. Oh, great. So while we're in between racks here, what? let's uh, pull up one of our little graphics that we've been creating while we were... Yeah. So I don't I love might, a good graphic. I think you might like this one, actually. Why? So that's a uh, wow. One of our graphics for the new one and the Pennsylvania State Championships. We're actually we, so it says starting in October, but we're starting one in September because you ladies love to travel all over the place, and it's incredibly hard to schedule a tournament when there are so many of them around here. Um, ladies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I have Brianna's. I have the Billiard Beauties. I have to make sure I schedule around all we that. You have a spreadsheet I on do, Facebook. Uh, I'm on the spreadsheet now. Are you on the spreadsheet? Yes. And I do not want to upset any of the, the wonderful ladies that are around here, so I make sure that they're... Ew, Jay Beanie says he needs a six and out. I'll give it to you. What, you think I'm scared? <laughs> Jay Beanie. We have updated and match here. John Tobin won 5 4 over John Ooh, Leno. That's my horse. Fantastic. Send a couple matches out here. You know what's funny about that? Good match. Rain, Rain, uh, Ranji versus uh, Roseanne Dahl. Ooh. Ooh. We got Alan sitting firmly on the hill here. But if Kevin. What Kevin's got to do is win a game, and all of a sudden it's Hill Hill. Then Alan's like, oh, man, I should have put it away when it was uh, four, three. It's 3-3? Three, 3-3. Three? Three, three. Remember, you scratch on Remember, oh, Alan scratch right. on it on. Never mind. Yeah. I booked that as a win. It was such a great shot. Oh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tyler's clapping. Tyler's our best cheerleader. Can we give him, like, a cheerleader badge? Sure. Awesome. Hey, Joe Pacetti, see how he hasn't picked up the rack? It's driving uh, me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> nuts. I hope, you know what? I hope. What's up? I hope the cue ball hits it and it goes somewhere it wasn't supposed to because no, it moved because he didn't pick it up. To, you're not supposed to want to root against your opponent. No, or, I'm talking about the these the guys in general. Pick up the rack. Why? Well, he's not even anywhere near it. All right. I'll tell you what. I'm going to commentate on the rack. <laughs> <laughs> and if it gets in the way of anybody's shot, I'm not, rude, I'm not cheering against anybody. Not anybody, not anywhere near the rack. It's still bothering me. I said he wrote it's automatically a built in excuse for a miss. I get that. Joe, I always like to stock up on excuses just in case. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pull this out of my back pocket, the next one out of my front pocket. <laughs> 18 minutes ago, you walked in front of the pocket. And that's why I missed now. <laughs> I played a girl at US Amateurs. You know what she said to me? What's that? She missed a ball, and she's like, oh, I'm thinking when you cheated from three racks ago. So what? Oh, what? Oh, that didn't turn out good for her. She lost. All right, so tough shot. Tough shot. And, yes, we're not going to touch the magic rack, I don't think, on the job, but it's still a touch shot. Oh, he opted to try to play a safe. He's trying to put the cue ball behind the five. Um, a tough shot. Still nobody has moved the magic rack. Even if I didn't touch it, I looked at it. That's what I'm saying, Joe. It screws me up. Like in the middle of the rack. I could be on the two ball, have a clear out to the nine, and I'm thinking about the magic rack down there. I have to go get it. Or I just sit there and think about it. It's awful. How it is for me. Apparently, these guys, it doesn't bother them. It's right there. When do you ever look on the table and see white plastic? Well, apparently these guys don't care. You put anything on the table. Oh, did you see that magic crack move? Huh? Okay. All right. Alyssa, thank you for backing me up. <laughs> I appreciate it. It drives me nuts. Nuts. Well, look, they moved it now. No, I moved it because he hit it last time. 
Yes, Alyssa. I completely agree. The one time it happens, <laughs> you'll never do it again. And then you'll think about this. You'll think, you know what? She brought this up. I could have won that match for $2,000 in a Friday night chip tournament. I should have listened. I'm just saying. All right. So I'm not swinging for the fences on this, that's for sure. Um, that was, eh, it was a good shot. It was good to break that ball up, but you leave your opponent an opportunity to save you. And I feel like Kevin has been playing saves. Yeah, it was a good shot. Put it right behind that eight ball, didn't he? Not easy, though. And that when you're playing those shots, you immediately have to be like, you know what? I still did good. Made the right choice. Me and a few people outside that have been playing today talked about that. Just, okay, did I not get the speed? Did I not make the ball? That's fine. But did I make the right choice? If you can make the right choices through these tournaments, it can get you so far just by not being silly. Definitely. Right? And then just being able to trust yourself. Thank you. No, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> Tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I'm surprised you're not playing in this tournament. Who? Me? I was. I can't play in this tournament. I'm rated too high. <laughs> I think I'm a jerk. <clears throat> oh, he's talking to Hector Medina. It wasn't even to me. Damn. <laughs> Call that back. <laughs> I don't know if Hector Medina has a Fargo. See, that's what I get. Hector Medina. I know he's been playing in Delaware for and been getting points down there towards Fargo. I just yeah, know way it's, too it's, much about that. <laughs> so uh, I I have this right now. I have this like and, and dislike relationship with Fargo. Not oh, yeah. Fargo the, themselves, actually. Not the like company, a, just the yeah, structure. Just the, the the tournament structure that's been picked up by a lot of people, especially with the 200 robustness and yeah. things like that. Like, So I'm going to do... I'm, Hold on one second, folks. Sorry, I had a rule question. Uh, What's that? I said, sorry, I had a rule question. Uh, what I was saying about Fargo is, you yeah. know, so in August, I'm going to do a uh, a Fargo, I don't know, Fargo builder, Fargo structure, tournament, whatever, where everybody that's getting in the tournament will know that every single person in the tournament does not have a Fargo. Every single one? Uh, every person in a tournament will not have a Fargo. It would be purposely, it's purposely created for non-Fargo players. As like players. an experiment? No, as a get into Fargo and we're, oh, it's yeah. going to be like a round robin. Like round robin where you get a whole bunch You're of robustness get a whole in bunch one day. Of, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like um, it's somewhat subjective. Like I know sevens that are not 500s. Or sevens because of the region that they play in. Yeah. You know? True. APA is a, is a regional type rank. You know, a seven in Philadelphia might not be a seven in Louisiana. Might not be a seven in San Diego. And I'll so tell you on what, so forth. The, the eights and nines of the world in Long Island compared to South Jersey, compared to Philadelphia, compared to Virginia. Yeah. They're all different animals. Absolutely. Yeah. Should be at least a nine in Virginia. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I lost my first two matches. I joined APA down there. Yeah. Lost my first two matches. I was so nervous. Uh, you know, I I was a bar box player until yeah. six months ago. And I've done, I love the big table. It's just my thought process is built for a bar box right now and trying to get it switched over to like let things go. And you've seen me play good. Yeah. Um, it, it's just sometimes I go back into that bar box, like little manipulative type uh, strategy as opposed to like the bigger picture and using the rails and moving yeah. around the table. I get really stubborn about it. <laughs> I'm like, I can do it anyway. 
if I make everything a seven foot shot, then I never have anything to worry about. But who does that 100% yeah. of the time? Who doesn't? Yeah. JB, the, the way to get a Fargo is to join a Fargo tournament. So, like, this 499 tournament would have been good for you to be in because I know that based on your, uh, so there's conversions out there, conversion charts. Based on the conversion, you being an APA 6, you would be uh, eligible. You'd like be at the high end. 50? Yeah, he'd be at the high end, like a 450, 450 475. Okay. Yeah. Can I do a shameless plug? Sure, go ahead. It's a really easy way to get a Fargo Radium. You can download the Salado app. You can play matches with people. Um, that does it, too. Um, it's just an app that you play, and you can play in somebody's basement at a pool hall, um, and the, ratchet, the matches get counted towards Fargo. It was important for me because when I was in New York, there wasn't a lot of Fargo anywhere. Um, you didn't, there weren't any BCA leagues. There wasn't anything that, that would allow us to get a Fargo rating. So I started playing these lotto matches and all of a sudden people started popping up having um, some sort of Fargo rating and then they can go play in tournaments, you know, but I, I really like, I like the integrity of a tournament with round robin where people are walking away with like 70 games of experience. Exactly. I think that's so good for everybody and it happens quick, you know? Yeah. Um, now, this one we're going to do, I believe it's going to be at uh, Eagle Billiards. Carol, oh, Eagle. That's Carol. Carol, Carol, yeah, Parks, Carol place. Parks place. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I haven't been up there yet. I'd like to get up there. I, we, ha we haven't been up there either, so we're taking a, yeah. take a ride up there. Is that like Pocono area? Ooh, that's a nice shot. Alan Wong making it five to, f I'm sorry, four to three. Alan is making some very he's good some, shots. Some really good shots. Yeah, guys. he's like dialed in with that for sure. For sure. I'm Alicia Silverstone. See, totally one more time. Guys, make sure you like and subscribe us on YouTube. All these matches after the tournament will be edited for content. So essentially we'll edit out all the stuff in the middle. So the start of the match to the end of the match will just be one YouTube video. None of the, you do uh, that? I edit every single match. No kidding. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. I don't edit it. So once I start the match to the finish of the match, I don't edit any of that content. Yeah. But like the four to six minutes between the, the end of like this match and the next one that starts, yeah. I get rid of all that. Okay. That's pretty cool. That's nice. It's so super important to go back and watch how you play. If you get a chance to play on a live stream, look, it's nerve wracking as can be, right? Oh, like, absolutely. I'm sure that these guys aren't super comfortable, um, but it gives you an opportunity to go back and look and see what you do. Like, it's super important to make sure you do the same thing every time before you play. So, like, your pre stroke routine, um, the best pool players don't move. Like, when you see them down on the shot and you see them following through, they lack movement. The only thing that should be moving is your arm like a pendulum. So when you can watch these videos, you can see how well you're not moving. Uh, so even though you might be nervous, it's really a good training tool and a way to get yourself out there. I actually practice. I have cameras set up in the basement, and I practice in the basement and do my camera set up there and watch all my wonderful misses. And... Right. You know what that made me think of? What's that? I put the lotion in the basket. I have, I have a nice little setup down there. Like in the I'm in my basement. <laughs> Do you know what I'm referencing? Absolutely. I put the lotion in the basket. It it, it puts the lotion. It in the puts basement. the lotion in the basket. <laughs> Give me a microphone and tequila. That's what you get. <laughs> All right. I got my finger on the sensor button. I'll wait for you. <laughs> you know what? I bet Kevin's going to move the rack. I bet he's going to move it. Move he's it, Kevin. He's going to move it here. He uh, learned the lesson last time, I felt uh, like. Yeah. Two ball does play off the four, though. Even if he doesn't get good on it. Yeah. He's good. He's good. I actually like the two off the four. I, li I still like that Because you got to come across for that three anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Let a natural cut go. Unless the four ball sticks in yeah. front of it. He's getting close to where he should move that magic rack. So I actually think Kevin's been playing uh, very well lately. I went down Barkley's a, a month or two ago. Him and I play a little Salado match. Oh, you did play Salado. Oh yeah, I've, I've played, I didn't know you played Salado. I played Salado. Yeah, I have a couple of them actually. Awesome. So for the players out there that do uh, play Salado, 
I want to tell you the one good thing I want to tell you about Salado. Salado ma- monitors the matches, which is a great thing in my opinion. So I played a couple weeks ago. I played a guy here, George, on this table actually, and we got the you can you can't see it from here on the camera, but above the the table is the old school uh, pool beats. So we kept Love score that. on the beats. Okay. And we just we just knew who won what racks. Yeah. Well, after the match was over, we. All at once, of, we put it in. all in at once. <gasps> Salado called me the next day. Like, you're being shady. They, they asked me, they're like, you know, it's, I, the match went in in like two minutes. I said, well, it's on a live stream. I said, if you want to watch it. Oh, and you're like, good thing it was I on did, live stream. I didn't realize yeah. that the, yeah. the, the Colby and Reader are on top I actually of it. think that's great. It's, it's fantastic. It, it's, because you know They're paying anything, attention to it and yeah. not saying that, it, you know, somebody who possibly could manipulate. You know, you know he bet. He wishes he moved that back right now. <laughs> You're freaking out, man. There he goes. I can't. No. Oh, no. Oh, my God. See? No. <laughs> you should have moved it. No. <laughs> I'm going to ask him after the match is over. Oh. You wish you moved that before. What I was getting at with uh, with Kevin, what I was saying to him playing a little Your bit show. better, the reason yeah. why I played a little bit better is he actually went up to New York and uh, took some lessons off of one of our new sponsors here, Margaret and Tyler Steyer. He went up the oh, skyline. That's a great picture and, uh, of her. She's like them, super intimidating. In the picture. <laughs> both of them were up there. Him and Andrew Tolino took a ride up, and they they got a nice afternoon lesson uh, with those two. And uh, I don't know if you ever spoken to Margaret Tyler. They are not. super super awesome, sweet people. I have chickened out really probably three or four times. And look, I'm super bubbly. You talk to anybody, but for I think she's got such. I'm I'm a fan. Oh, is but, what it I'm is. actually a fan of both of them. The yeah. great thing about them too is like, so if you contact them on uh, Gmail here, eight nine ten bull at gmail dot com, they could actually do virtual lessons with you too. You don't necessarily be have like giddy. I'd be yeah. fangirling the entire time. I don't think I could do it. So oh, we were no. at the uh, when we were down Atlantic City with yeah. you at the at the event there. Yeah, um, her and Mindy actually were wearing the same clothes. I, yes, the same shirt, same yes. pants, everything. But I. Uh, I, I just like the way. I just like the way that they, um, the way that they approach a game. Both of them agree. It's very smart, and it's very like you should be training, you should be practicing, you need to get ready for game day. Very fundamental. Yeah. Um, like your other sponsor, Christina uh, Takash, her workbook. Like yeah. that's part of her her ethic I around the got, game. I actually got that book for Mindy. And uh, we've like, been I want one. we've been writing in it like yeah. yeah she misses a shot we we diagram it and then she goes that's and practices great. it. that I mean that's what's gonna you know you take a shot you miss you make it a hundred times you're yeah. not gonna miss it anymore I missed the shot you know? years ago I, I really was you haven't missed a shot in years no, 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 I'm just, this shot will always <laughs> stick in my head okay I I missed a shot here years ago we were playing in a tournament uh, Masters type style tournament and I was actually losing the match five to one. I came back to get double hill. I missed the eight ball in the side pocket oh. to go to win. And I was heartbroken. Like it was like I felt like I let my everybody in the world I, watch I me down. I felt that more times than I'd like to admit. I came back here the next day and there was a young kid playing back there. I paid him twenty dollars for for an hour. For actually two hours. He he sat there. And all he kept doing was spotting the, the ball, ball and I just kept shooting five hundred times I shot it. And I actually kept the score. I no missed kidding. it. I missed it 212 times. Now I don't think I'll ever miss the shot ever. That's again. amazing. I gotta answer some real questions. Right You're back. okay. I'm here. Y'all can hear me. What's this? Jay Vini doesn't want to show up to bluegrass or some action, does he? <laughs> oh hell! All right, we have. Isn't this Hill Hill? Yes, it is. I'm going to fix the score. Um, both of these players have made some pretty decent shots, I think, in my opinion. My opinion, of course. It's my preface, you don't call me a liar. Um, I'd like to see... I, it's far enough in the tournament now where I think people are starting to warm up. <laughs> I know, for me, sometimes it takes a minute. Um, but I'd like to see... I think that some of these players are completely capable of of running out they're getting warmed up they're starting to see what they could do be positive with it just a matter of getting sight on the ball but kevin he does look pretty intense right now i feel like he's going to try to put the cube behind the eight that would be the best shot and that's exactly what he did that's a great job 
Um, I am sitting pretty much directly behind the cue ball right now in line of sight for it. And I think that the only way that this one ball is getting hit is if Alan uh, takes it to the rail, the lower rail on the screen. Um, any other way is pretty much way more difficult than just using that rail. So he needs to make a contact, but he might leave some sort of shot, some sort of look at the one ball. Which he did. So Kevin, he's got to make a decision, right? And especially for those of you that are just starting to learn pool. The, the first thing you do anytime you get to a table is you make a decision. And the decision here, the first decision is usually, am I playing to make the ball or am I playing safe, right? Decision number one. You look at that and you say, well, I can't really make the ball. Okay, well, the decision then is safe, right? If you can't do one, you got to do the other. So Kevin looked at that. Either he didn't want to make the ball or he didn't feel like he can get on the next ball. So he played it safe. It was a smart shot. But what's, what I hope he doesn't do is get ball in hand and like play a combo here because you really shouldn't be doing that. But Allen ends up manufacturing a good hit on the ball. Uh, Kevin is going to be kicking in some way, shape, or form. I imagine he's going to come behind this four ball, which is at the top of your screen, to get some sort of good hit. And what's nice about that, he's got this little barrier with the three and the seven ball that are on the table. So if he can go to the rail, that's on top of the screen, picture this, behind the four ball. If he can go to that rail and come and hit the one, and he hits it full, the one's going to hit into the bottom rail in the right-hand corner, right-hand side, and kind of pop around the table, and the cue ball's going to stay back there. So I think that's the best choice that he has now. That looks like what he's taking. So I'm interested to see how this turns out. Yeah, see? I had to come back here for the finish of the Hill Hill Thriller here. Hill, I, hey, I, see? That was the shot, though. So he had to go behind the four, and if he hit that ball full face, he could have, like, worked into a safe. If he would have taken the magic rack off, would he have made it? The magic rack's already gone. Oh, you know yeah. why? Because he learned last rack. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, we're going to get this thing out of here. <laughs> It doesn't need to be a variable in my quest for greatness, Frank. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm coming up with these words now. All right. Looks like Alan might be going for a save here for... Well, I would. Where are you going to make the ball? Maybe trying to put him on three. I think he might have it here, actually. Well, that's the other thing. If you don't have a runnable table or you're not capable of running out at that moment, put him on three, right? And for those of you that don't know, putting a player on three, um, this is something that you learn when you enter into tournaments. It's not usually a league concept. I don't think Masters or Top or anywhere no, plays three. No, not foul. that I know yeah. of. Yeah. Um, basically, BC BCA you, does, from what I know of. Yeah. Basically, yeah. if you can get ball in hand three times, then you win the game. But there's rules with that. Oh, see, he got it. <laughs> Oh, it. he drilled the one ball. Drilled it, wow. He said two foul. What? No. Oh, wow. But if he did that, he was on two, yeah? I don't, I'm not, I don't think he was on two. Well, what happens is, so you put some, you get ball in hand once. Let's say I scratch on the break. Well, technically I'm on one. I have one scratch, right? My opponent could take the ball, play a save, make it so I can't hit the ball, and then get ball in hand again. Then I'm on two. Once you're on two, if you foul again, well, first, you have to tell your opponent you're on two. Uh, I played in a tournament, there was a stupid rule where the person had to be approaching the table. So because the girl was sitting down in her seat and not actually getting up and approaching, they called a ref and they ruled in her favor. Really? Yes. So I pay attention to that rule just very not, closely. Guess what? I beat her anyway. Good. Yeah, I think my husband threw a cheesesteak at her or whatever. <laughs> that's, um, well, no. <laughs> that's just disrespectful of the cheesesteak. The cheesesteak, I know, right? <laughs> He warned her. He's like, I'm going to throw this if you keep it up. And no, no it is what it is. So who? No. What? No. <laughs> Sorry. It wasn't a Philly cheesesteak. It was like a, it was like the equivalent of like a gas station cheesesteak. Uh, okay. You know what Just, I'm saying? You know the difference between a, a Philly cheesesteak and like a cheesesteak from the rest of the world? What? If somebody has to call it a Philly cheesesteak, then it sucks. <laughs> we just automatically <laughs> know here that it's a cheesesteak it's from philly that's amazing never heard it like that so if any restaurant ever advertises that they sell philly cheesesteaks just don't even order and they, you know what's funny is they put peppers on it yes. but i don't know that many cheesesteak places that automatically put peppers because on it because they don't it's a tourism thing i don't like peppers if, if you go down to one of the 
or, you know, original places down yeah, there. Yeah, Patch, Gino's. Yeah, you don't get a... Uh, don't what's play. the one on South Street? Steve's? It starts with S, That's I the think. Prince Steve's. That's yeah. my favorite. Yeah. Well... I might have to talk to Steve, see if maybe they want a, they, they want a sponsorship. I mean, <laughs> I will... I'll take anybody who wants to throw a free yeah. cheesecakes at us. <laughs> Pat's, Gino's, uh, Tony Luke's, so right? Is, well, that's, Tony Luke's is more known for their roast pork than anything, but... They do have good roast pork. Fantastic roast pork. I'm so hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> we need roast pork stuff. <laughs> Please, somebody. We're at Bluegrass Billiards in uh, Philadelphia. <laughs> Bring us nourishment. No, I'm just kidding. They actually have really great food here. Oh, uh, food. Uh, I actually, uh, I want them to enter their mozzarella sticks in a contest. I think they have the best mozzarella sticks I've ever tasted in my life. Are they beer battered? They're, they're thick, too. They're <gasps> like, they're, they're, I'll get us a set. They're, okay. I think my mouth is watering. Yeah. All right. Sorry. In this Hill Hill thriller, I have got. <laughs> it's, no, I'm just hungry. All right. So, Mr. Kevin is on the two ball. He does have out possibilities here. He he just went and checked uh, the th four ball, I think, to see if it plays in the side. I don't know if I play it in the side, but we're going to see how he ends up on this. He's got a little angle. I think he's going to stay on the same side of the table that he's on to try to play that four ball. I still think he's trying to go for the side. Yes. Which is okay. But if we look at that five ball just for what it is, right? How many pockets is that five ball playing? It plays in the side that's at the top part of our screen. Five plays, A combo looks like it. Yeah, looks you really want to do a combo with put the five ball on position? Like, look at what kind of position you have to manufacture from the shot with that five ball, right? Well, I mean, I don't miss. So. Well, <laughs> no, I I actually do. <laughs> I actually do like the combo here, but I also like the safe too. No, but, see, it wasn't there. It wasn't there. Yeah, I like a combo. Okay. The, no, what, the I was, pro what I was saying is, that, like, when he shot the four, he got a he got a bad. He had to be in line. I I would have played the four to get a pos to get a safe positional shot. I agree. So I would agree. Have, I would yes. tr tr try yes. to after that look to hide the key yes. ball behind a nine ball. I find with most combos, the position shot to get to a combo. You're better off leaving it so the combo shot is a straight shot. Like yeah. cue ball, the the ball you're comboing with, and the ball that's going in really need to be in a straight line. And you also don't want to have to put a lot of juice on a, on a combo. Yeah, you don't want to, you saying. don't want to have to English it. You don't I, want that's to have exactly to... what I'm saying. You need to be in a straight line. So all you have to do is just tap the ball. It goes in and leaves the other ball in its spot. Like with combos, most of the time, yeah. I'm playing them in the same pocket. Yeah. So if you just play it straight, it makes more sense, and then you have them both in the same pocket. That's just how I feel about it. I just got very passionate. <laughs> Sorry. That means it. That it's means at microphone. some point in your life, either a teammate or somebody missed the combo, or it was or me. The combo actually, that you were mad about. Actually, it's funny you say that because I talk about this combo shot all the time, and I hate to admit it. I was playing doubles with John Tobin. Yeah. Okay. We had, it was Hill Hill, we had a three ball run out, but he left me a combo, uh, thinking that I had the capability of like, you know, just making it, not being a douche about it. Yeah. Well, guess what? <laughs> Missed it. I, I rock it. No, I made it. I made the combo, but wasn't planning on where I was putting the ball I was comboing oh, with and left it where like object ball on the rail, cue ball 50 yard line. What do you do with that? Yeah. So meanwhile, meanwhile Kevin Farmer's getting out of here. I hope I hope to see it. All right, here you go. Where do you go? Corner, side pocket. Side pocket. Vito. Side yeah. pocket, just spin it down, come right back up. Yeah, I'm going into the rail though for sure. Yeah. Kind of want to go two rails. That's where I start getting crazy. Nah, I'm kind of changing nah, my mind. I might be trolling. I had to change I might be my mind. That yeah. Low, low right three. Right yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got to assert dominance on the last three. Assert like two dominance. <laughs> what it's hill hill. <laughs> Oh, look. Absolutely. He decided to hit it at the appropriate speed into That's the side not pocket. The appropriate speed. Look, that, look where that ball's at. Who cares? At least right the now. magic rack is gone. All right. <laughs> we're we're going to get you whatever magic rack is the worst at the end of the day. We're going to get you that <laughs> scissors and we'll just let you go to town Thank on you. it. Thank you. Please. Oh. Leaves not. The leaves not. It's power, uh, Huh. It's a makeable shot, but it requires a little bit of skill and effort here. Do you think this is a scratch shot? Honestly, I kick it. Uh -huh. 
I'd rather kick it where I can get myself fully on the table and comfortable with the shot I versus grabbing out the bridge and leaning over. This is a, I would not be shooting this ball yet. I would take like a minute and a half. <laughs> I, I would I would not even pick the bridge up. I wouldn't nope. even go near it. Nope. No, 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 I just no, no. feel more he comfortable. With he did. The, he put it back. Yeah, I feel more comfortable with the kick. See, I was leaning over the table. It's just an unorthodox way. What do you think about playing that ball in the top right-hand corner? Is that insane or is that like an awesome shot? Yeah. Oh, the two row? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe not a tournament. That puck. You know what? What's a better time to do it? Yeah. Again, you got a certain dominance. I it's, it's, right. you, you did just say a certain dominance, right? You got to stare at why you do it. Yeah. Into his soul. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, yeah. So, like, look, oh, he's, look. Got, he's got the extension on everything. He's leaning over. It's just, it's not a good shot. Jay Vini says save. He's a chicken. He's not going to win with that kind of attitude. I'm just kidding, Jay. So I would, as I said, I, it's because you're only moving that nine ball about six inches. So He's if, breaking his cue down. Oh, he took the extension off. Oh, I thought it was like, no. <laughs> like a jump cue. I was like, what? So I'm saying, you only got to move that nine ball six inches. So I, I just don't like the cut here because you can beat it into the rail. You can hit it into the nipple. Oh, he's cut the hell out of balls, though. He has. And he's been playing great this match, but. Oh, he and made, he made it. it. Did a great shot. Yeah, Alawan beats Kevin Farmer in a Hill Hill Thriller, 5-4. to four. That was crazy. Good times. Yeah, it was a, it was a great match on first stream. Absolutely. Both played very well. It's exciting. It was a good cut shot. That was t that wasn't an easy shot. No, not at all. No. That's what I'm saying. I, I yeah f for the match win. I don't want to. I don't want a hard shot. Obviously. Yeah, and he was able to do that after scratching on that nine earlier. That took a little bit of guts. All right, folks. Yeah, definitely a great shot, Jay. All right, we'll be back. Stay tuned while we get the next match ready. Thank you.